Sea Lion 2018.1 refines, improves, and extends in some big ways. Let's start by looking at C++ language support. We now cover much more of C++ 17, starting with structured bindings. We also have support for the new initializes in if and switch statements. More generally, we fixed a whole set of issues with the ternary operator, as well as numerous other fixes. Do check the release notes for the complete set. Also, the rename and change signature refactorings are now more robust when dealing with class hierarchies. We previously introduced Clang Tidy integration, with many additional checks for improving the quality of your code base. In this release, we've extended that integration with UI for setting options to specific checks, such as this modernized pass by value, where for values only, setting a one means that it will only warn if you already take by value, but don't use standard move. As well as supporting C and C++, CLine already came bundled with a plugin for Python support, and additional languages such as Swift were also available by separately downloadable plugins. In this release, we're very pleased to extend CLine support for several more native languages, starting with built-in support for Objective-C and Objective-C++. These come fully featured with things like code inspections. For a while now, we've had plugins for Fortran and Rust, but the big news for this release is that for Rust, CLine now supports the cargo build system and fully supports debugging. On Windows, we're pleased to announce that we now support building, running, and debugging in WSL. That's the Windows subsystem for Linux. To do this, you'll first have to have a flavor of Linux installed and configured within Windows. Instructions for doing that can be found at the link shown or from the What's New article. Once that's done, within CLine, you can go to Settings and to the Toolchains page to add a toolchain for WSL. The integration works over SSH, so you'll need to enter credentials here. With that done, CLine will automatically detect tools in the toolchain that are installed in default locations, but if you want to use different paths, you can enter them explicitly here. But usually, you'll just accept the defaults. With the toolchain set up, you can add or update a CMake profile to use it. And that's it. Now, when you build, it will seamlessly do so on the Linux subsystem over SSH. You can run from CLine 2 as well as from a bash prompt. This is the Linux process being executed. And you can debug. Again, exactly as you would a local process. You get all the same debugging features, including inline debug variables. And now we're using a true Linux toolchain. This means we can also set it up to use Valgrind memcheck, which was previously not available for CLine on Windows. Assuming Valgrind is installed, which is easy to do with apt-get, just enter the path to the Valgrind executable in settings. And now you can use the run with Valgrind memcheck option. Any leaks will be shown in the special Valgrind tab, and you can home in on the exact line that caused it. We now support CMake install. So if your CMake project has an install target in it, then the install option in the run menu will run the installation. You can also add it as a step to the run or debug configuration. And if you're creating additional cmakelist.txt files, we now have a template for them, which of course you can edit yourself. So while CMake remains central to the CLine experience, there's also ongoing work to decouple CMake from CLine. As part of that, you can now open any folder or file in CLine without it being in a CMake project. This will limit how much intelligence CLine has about the file, but it can be useful. The editor windows now show breadcrumbs. These are a navigable representation of the hierarchy of the scopes in your code, allowing you to move through these scopes with ease. Talking of scopes, if you have if, else, or other control blocks in your code, there's now a feature to be able to unwrap them by removing parts of the enclosing or enclosed code. Alternatively, you may wish to just temporarily hide blocks in the editor, 
And you can do that too with code folding, which as of this release now works for control statements too. And the message window gains some new options. The default is always show on build, which makes sure the window always shows on a build even if it was closed before. But now there's also auto hide and show on warning or error. This hides the window on build but opens it again if there were errors or warnings. And the third option is just to leave both disabled and that will leave the window however it was unless there is a warning or error. The project window shows all the files in the project directory by default. You can now customise this view with project scopes. Dropping down the title lets you select from a list of available scopes. But you can now also add your own new scopes. Usually by providing a file name pattern to match against. Any custom scopes you add can also be used in finding path. If you use git for version control, you can now make partial commits. This is where you commit changes from parts of a file while leaving other changes in the file uncommitted. This can be useful if not all your changes are ready yet or if some belong to a different logical set. You can also move these chunks to a change list and so track them independently even before you commit. The debugger can now show hexadecimal values for integral types. You'll need to enable it in the settings registry for now as this feature is still experimental. The easiest way to do that is to launch find action and type registry. Then type hex to find this setting and enable it. And now you can turn it on in settings again by launching find action and typing hex. Hex values are now shown alongside decimal values in the debug tool window and in line in the editor. And there's more. As usual, there have been a number of performance improvements. Most notably this time, highlighting is now incremental. So if you make a small change to a large file, the file re-highlights much faster. There's a couple of new color schemes, Monokai and GitHub, as well as fixes to some existing color schemes. And on Windows, if you're using the MSVC toolchain, this is now enabled by default. So this has been What's New in CLine 2018.1. Thanks for listening. And as always, you can download a free 30-day trial from the website.